What's good, my people? Welcome into Buckets, Action Network's daily NBA betting podcast. We're in the workshop. This is the Thursday edition. We're talking game two Warriors-Lakers in San Francisco. Warriors looking to bounce back here. Line opened at minus five over at our sponsors, FanDuel, and now sits at minus five and a half. Remember, if you're listening to Buckets and you like what we're doing, Leave us a five-star review, Apple Podcast, Spotify, wherever you listen. Drop a note as well. Let us know who your favorite Buckets analyst is. And if you do so, we'll pick a couple people from that list, and you'll get the choice of getting some Action Network merch or, even more valuable, one-year subscription to the Action Network Pro, uh, Pro Abilities on the app. Tons of different things, tons of different tools you can use when you're going through your daily breakdown and capping and figuring out what you like for the evening. Leave us a five-star review, drop who your favorite analyst is, and we'll pick you and give you an award. That's what we do here at the Action Network. All right, it's Thursday. I'm here with our guys, Brandon Anderson, BA, you know him, and J Money is money. We're breaking it down. You know how we do it. We give our favorite play for a Warriors Lakers. We give the cap. We get out of here. I'm gonna kick it to you first. J money is money. What are you looking at? Warriors Lakers game two. Yeah, I think there's a lot of different type of ways you can look towards the Warriors. I will go with them to have a better start to this one. I'll take Warriors in the first quarter minus two. Ba, what are you looking at? I like the Warriors too. I'm just going to take the full game. Got it at four and a half on the open. It looks like it's five and a half right now. I'll take the five and a half. I'm with both of you guys. I'm, I'll am i give out the first quarter Warriors minus two, and I'll give out the full game minus five, minus five and a half. I think the Warriors show up in a big spot here. Jay Money, I'm coming right back to you. Talk to me about why you like the first quarter. Is it more of a spot play? Is it something you saw in game one that you liked? Why Warriors here in the first? Yeah, it's more of a spot play. Um, obviously, the Warriors have to come out here with adjustments as well. And it's it's complacency versus must win. This is a spot that I'll basically take uh, 100 times out of 100, live with the results. We know the Lakers came in there, did uh, did their job, right? Get, got uh, game one. Uh, now you just kind of get a little bit complacent in this one. Now, could they go up 2-0? It's very possible, but um, I don't see it. We saw it that uh, the Warriors, they have to shoot a lot of threes. They they um, they had a they, they beat them in the math game, right? It's just that, obviously, Anthony Davis pretty business down low they didn't want to drive inside so it's all about shooting a three they did that well Lakers beat them on the twos um I just don't expect the Lakers to have that much success here obviously Steph was a little slow footed as well um coming off that 50 point game only one day of rest coming off that game seven so we knew that the Warriors weren't going to be at full strength and knowing now still only one day of rest between these games but now you have to come out here with the must win mentality playing defense as well I think it starts off early and often in this one I'll take the Warriors in the first quarter Jay, we talked about it in the last episode of Buckets. Anthony Davis, if he's going to show up, they're going to have a real good chance to win this series. He goes for 30, 23 boards, five dimes and four blocks. Is that what you're looking for out of Anthony Davis? 11-19 from the floor. Yeah, well, it won't happen every single game, but I mean, I do feel like you, you, you and Matt were kind of disrespecting a little bit, saying that Looney was gonna stop. I'm like, not, not Looney. This is, this is not Sabonis here. So, uh, Anthony, I mean, we know he's prone to bad games, though. So, um, this is one where I don't expect the Lakers to fully show up. I think they will be very uh, content going back to the house, one one, uh, with the opportunity to win both home games and uh, lead the series three one. Which that's exactly what I think is gonna happen. To be honest with you, but it wasn't um, that. It wasn't I think this that is I be said that game from AD. It wasn't that both I y'all was on hold it. Man. On, hold both on, y'all hold on. It, <laughs> it wasn't that I said Looney was gonna stop Anthony Davis. I wanted to see if those guys, Looney and Draymond, got physical with Anthony Davis, how he was gonna respond. And he had no issues in game one. BA, you also like the Warriors here. Full game, though. Talk to me about that. Yeah, this is very much a spot play, much more than a confidence in Warriors play. I was on the Warriors game one, didn't get it. I was on the Warriors in the series. I certainly don't feel as good about it as I did before the the game one. Uh, Yeah, I think the Warriors tried to get physical with Anthony Davis. I'm not sure he noticed, right? (laughs) uh, I'm not sure that he even noticed that Kevon Looney was playing other than all the rebounds, which Looney's a great rebounder. But yeah, I I, there's a lot of adjustments that are going to need to come out of this. I felt like the Warriors found some things late with that back to their old old faithful, the small ball lineup, open things up. I think 
last round when Draymond got suspended, we saw them go to that one big lineup and out of necessity. They had to. And Peyton was out as well. And that really unlocked the offense. It opened things up. It spread things out. And I wonder if that might be a solution they have to go back to a little bit here and do more of that. Maybe that means a little less Looney or staggering Looney and Draymond. I'm curious about that. We always talk in buckets about we, we don't get to make the coaching adjustment ourselves. So we can't bet it. I want to I want to bet like, OK, well, here's where I think it has to go. So how do I play those angles? I don't want to do that yet. This here is more of a spot play for me. And it's a lot of what Jay said. This is a spot where I don't think it's a Lakers punt. So actually, I I prefer the full game to the first quarter. I think the Lakers come out firing away in the first quarter. LeBron, hit, you know, takes four threes and is like, let's see if I got it tonight, right? Let's see if the shots are falling. And if they do, well, they're going to go for it. If the shots are falling and the Warriors look a little like they're staggered a little bit, oh, you know LeBron is going to go for the kill and try to put this thing away. So I, I worry that maybe the first quarter doesn't go there, but over the course of the game, game one, we had the fatigue angle in, in, in favor of the Lakers. Game two is the other way. Anthony Davis played 44 minutes. He looked fried at the end of that game. He was barely moving, made a couple of big plays. Give him credit. But he played a lot. LeBron played 40. Last series, the Lakers themselves went on the road, stole game one, and then kind of no-showed for game two. They 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 felt like, hey, we get the job done. We got our road to win. It's the fortress. Memphis had an even better home court advantage than Golden State did, so that was just equally as big of a win for them. And game two at home, teams that are down 0-1. So far in this postseason, those teams are 5-0. They've won by 17, 14, 10, 16, and then just six from the Knicks. But that's an average of 12.6 a game. That is now 14 straight times that the team down 0-1 at home in the playoffs has won that next game. So I think there's a lot of that effect of we got our win. The Lakers clearly played all the cards they had. They played all the minutes on their top guys. They smelt it, they went for it, and whew, they hung on for dear life, and they got it. And I think that pretty much at the first sign that it seems like the Warriors are starting to pull away, the Lakers with just a game every two days, every two days are going to have to kind of call the dogs a little bit, get Davis a little rest, and then regroup and, and do it in L.A. Yeah, I agree. That's why I'm looking at the first quarter and the full game. I think the Warriors come out and, and get busy early and end up closing out the game and covering the number. You're dead on about the Lakers. The Lakers, let's be honest, they did run out of gas. They were out of gas. <laughs> and D'Angelo Russell got them a late a late bucket, the go-ahead bucket, and they were able to hang on. You can even tell from the LeBron James three that we're not speaking about. He was out of gas. He's like, I, I'll just get this up, and let, let's try to get a stop here on defense. You have to find – Anthony Davis played the entire second half. Ham has to find three or four minutes that he can sit. Now, it might be one of those things where they, like you said, B.A., let's go for it. We have it. Let's run Anthony Davis the entire second half. Let's do what we got to do to get this game won, and then we can figure out what we need to do for for the rest of the series after that. They got it. They ended up hanging on and got the W. I think this is where they they do come off the gas. If, if there's any spots to come off the gas, it's going to be here in game two, especially if the Warriors start getting rolling. Also, B.A., I'm dead on with you. They're going to have to go to some – we can't bet this, like you said. We can't bet the <laughs> coaching changes. But I think Steve Curl see this. The, the, the small ball was going to be more effective because when you're running Looney, Draymond, and then Clay, Wiggins, and Curry, you're essentially playing three on five on offense. The, 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 those other two guys flat out are not looking for shots, and it's just tough to play, Make The only guys that are handling the rock in those situations are Draymond and Curry – and we know Dre's not looking at the hoop. So I'm interested to see how those adjustments do come out. The Lakers went out and got it done. And their MO all year, just like they did in Memphis, is let's handle business. And we'll essentially – it's, it's, it's funny to determine if it's like a conscious layoff or if it's, if it's subconscious. But, yeah, all year they, they've had some lapses in these spots where it's like, hey, we, we did what we needed to do. Let's get back to L.A. and figure it out. Jay, any thoughts on the adjustments for, I guess, both sides? We talked about the Warriors potentially going small. What worries you about 
the Lakers here in game two or the or the Warriors? Anything you're looking at here, adjustment side for game two? Um, well, I mean, for, for the team that won, there's not a ton of adjustments that you're going to make, right? So uh, obviously they know that it's going to be hard to score in the paint. Um, I think for the for the Warriors, it's pretty simple. You go with the small ball. You go with what worked to get you that, what, 14-0 uh, run during the fourth quarter. So that's what they're going to have to do. They're probably going to have to run some fake dribble handoffs with Draymond. That's kind of what they figured out in the last series versus the Kings. Okay, you're not going to guard me. You're not going to pay attention to me on the perimeter. If you run those fake dribble uh, handoffs, like you know how he runs the screen and then passes it off if he decides to keep it he'll might he'll have a lot of wide open lanes to the basket so there there will be some things that the warriors will adjust to but um i, I think it's that simple just go to the small ball and they're gonna both teams are gonna relatively keep it the same because the warriors kind of they won the math game and hitting the threes they just i mean obviously the free throw discrepancy was eye popping right so that was really the game right there warriors would usually win that game by 10 points with hitting that many threes that they did and with i mean we can't we got to talk about the lakers as well they didn't shoot that well from three as well and D'Angelo Russell I mean if they're going to keep putting Curry on him he's going to put Curry I don't think a lot of people talk about this Curry's not a great defender Clay Thompson has lost, has lost a step as well so I think that's the thing for the Lakers they're going to keep putting Curry in the pick and roll making him work uh, and it's probably going to continue to work BA who can get to the line for the Warriors does it have to be Wiggins does Wiggins just have to because we know Wiggins can get passive sometimes I, honestly if you go back and look at the game, Wiggins didn't break a sweat the entire game. I don't think he was sweating in the fourth quarter. It, there's been times where, you know, offensively he may get a little passive and they're going to need him in this series. Yeah, they definitely need more Wiggins for sure. That was a big note for me. That's one of those props I want to play here on the potential adjustment, but we can't do it yet. Uh, the books made his line 17 and a half on the points. I think he's going to have to be a more of a scorer here. He, and I know how, that's, how this sounds, he has got to be the Kevin Durant in this series. Like, remember when things would bog down and they couldn't find the offensive shot? Just right. give it to KD and let him cook a little bit. And the, Wiggins is not that. Let's be very clear. But they're putting D'Lo on him. They're hiding D'Lo on Wiggins because Wiggins is not going to take advantage of it. He's got to. He's got to use the size. He's got to get that, you know, just that jumper that he can get to. And he's done that. He, he did that to kind of really stabilize the offense against Sacramento a little bit at times. It's almost like, hey, this is a Wiggins possession. It's We're going to do a Phoenix offense possession. Everyone else, catch your breath. Staff, stop running around 17 screens here. You're all tired. Wig, let's see what you can do. And it's not going to be our most efficient possession, but we need that. You got the mismatch, and we need to buy a few of these moments here. I think it is that. I don't know if it's going to be at the line, hopefully a little bit. I'm, I think he had, did he even have a free throw in the first game? I don't believe he did, right? Let me take a look here. I mean, they only had they only had a few two free throws. He had 15 points, throws. six rebounds, two free throws, no assists. It's not enough. He's going to have to play better. He's going to have to attack those mismatches. Look, they're not going to close the free throw gap. We we knew this. the The Lakers lead the league in free throws and lead the league in fewest free throws allowed. And the Warriors don't get to the line, and you don't get to the line shooting a thousand threes. None of that is ref show. That is not ref show. That is style. That is the thing we knew was going to happen coming into the series. I think that there were a few calls late that went the Lakers way that timeout granted when I thought it was a pretty clear jump ball with like five seconds left. Yeah, that was rough there. There were a couple of calls like that. Those weren't foul calls. The fouls that happened was Jordan Poole electing not to play defense and fouling Dennis Schroeder and put like Dennis Schroeder at 10 free throws. You can't do that. If Davis is going to put up 30 and 23 and beat you, so be it. You cannot give Dennis Schroeder 10 free throws. You can't do that. The Lakers offense is going to have to find other ways to score. You can't give them easy stuff like that. And I think to me, if there is a game seven fatigue factor, that's the sort of stuff where it comes in. Those fatigue fouls, those fatigue mental mistakes. And, and frankly, that might just be Jordan Poole. That might not be fatigue either. And they're going to get some of that. So you know, Jordan Poole giveth and Jordan Poole taketh away. We, we got a, a wide spectrum from him. I don't think they're going to close the free throw gap. We talked on the series preview about, to me, this series is about three is greater than one. We saw that. The Lakers are going to get the ones. They got the free throws. They were plus 20 on free throws. The Warriors are going to get the threes. They had, they had 15 more threes. That's advantage Warriors, very clearly. Plus 45 on threes, plus 20 on free throws. It's a 25-point advantage. Uh-oh, you still lost. Well, to me, that's not about the threes, not about the free throws. 
this game was one lost in the paint. That's where it was lost. The, the Warriors were terrified of Anthony Davis. They pulled up short, especially late. They're not getting those shots. That's, again, a spot you need Wiggins to play a little bigger, I think, there to help solve that. You need to scheme a little bit. I think the, the one big lineup spacing out helps to attack that a little bit. I think they got to put LeBron into the action a little bit defensively, start to wear him out, get to Anthony Davis a little earlier. We saw how flat-footed he got late. So, yeah, those are some of the adjustments I'm looking for. I'm going to keep playing the threes props over. Uh, Clay Thompson over four and a half. I think that's a good threes angle to play. He shot six of 16 in game one. Look, we know that he's going to hit 16 shots. If you're getting up 16, he's going to get to five most nights because Clay Thompson going to be shooting. Lakers give up a lot of three point attempts. The Warriors are getting up a lot of them. I just looked this up. Clay this season has taken 14 or more attempts from three point 18 times now, twice in the playoffs, 16 regular season. He's hit this over five or more threes, all 18 games, <laughs> all 18. So we don't know. We don't know if the attempts will be there, but we saw them blitzing staff, trying to get the ball out of his hands. We're going to have to have clay and pool threes. I don't know if the Warriors have a ton of other options. So I think I'm going to have to keep winning. The three is greater than one game, but the twos can't be the part where the Warriors lose the game. Jay, any other thoughts before we get out of here? No other thoughts for me, my guys. To recap, J Money is money. First quarter minus two Golden State Warriors. BA full game. Golden State Warriors. What is it? You got minus four early. Uh, it was four and a half early. It's five and a half now. I still like it at that number. I am on full game minus five and a half as well. And I'm also on the first quarter with Jay. I think the Warriors in this spot bounce back and take care of business. That's gonna be it. Four buckets. Thursday edition. Warriors Lakers game two. Preview for BA for J Money is Money. I am Sean Little. Always remember, get buckets, baby.